Uh, go and stay. Hey. It's a great way to start the show. <laughs> Should we start over? <laughs> Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and... Yeah. Banging chicks and drinking beers no, not and me. smoking I'm, not weed. Me. I'm married. Oh, yeah, well, I'm married. Jake, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> off panel, off top of with Jake and Tyler. All right. Are you all right? We had to restart the show, but I left it in because I'm a jerk. Thanks, man. It's going down. Thanks for making. Ah, wow. 35 <laughs> shit. seconds. 38 Both. seconds. I don't give a shit. Fuck. <laughs> hey. Vikings won. Vikings win. Vikings win. We already did it. You know what, man? The Vikings <sighs> did win. I'm proud of you. So did the Buccaneers. I'm glad that you So did the Yuckaneers. Get out of my house. It's not funny. Why are you laughing? Tampa Bay Yuckaneers. Tampa Bay f- you up. It's um, a Sunday at the park. <laughs> Good song. Sometimes a Monday. Sometimes a Thursday night. Or Sometimes Friday, a Saturday, or a Tuesday, if it's Christmas. or a Wednesday. Oh, who cares? Because it's, you know, it's... It's the NFL. Fucking NFL. Oh. Well, there goes our sponsorship. Shit. They break down my door. I'm Roger Goodell, and I'm here to kick your asses. Hey, listen, fucker, you don't talk <laughs> negatively about the NFL. I represent the shield. They blow What are we doing? Away. Why are we With guns. just ending any chance we have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With our six subscribers. They're like, hey, let's <laughs> make sure off panel, off topic is in a fold. Because they're going to bring us those six people. Off panel, out of bounds, in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> That's their name to me. I'm Roger Goodell. <laughs> <laughs> this got removed from YouTube. It was copyright. If you're going to talk shit about the NFL, we're going to own it. Um, yeah, dude, because, I mean, that's a lot of money for us. Talking shit on the NFL is prohibited. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck? All right, so this is episode 166, Pick Up Sticks of... Uh, 166, yeah. give me another six and it's a devil. It's your fault. It's your fault. Be mad at yourself. If you're still listening to the show, it's, it's on you, you know. Hey, that's not really nice. Kill me! That's yeah. nicer. That's better. Yeah. It's more clear. Yep. More concise. We have uh, some news. Did we say I'm Tyler, you're Jake? Yeah, well, okay. they're going to learn. <laughs> They'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. So, uh, um, but, uh, well, this isn't news. This is kind of, I don't know, we just haven't really talked about it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the, the talks of what happened with the Acolyte, mm-hmm. with it being canceled. Mm-hmm. First of all, I'm not surprised in a way that I was... I didn't think that it was going to be more than one season. Like, I don't know why we had... Because I, I, I don't know. I just didn't anticipate it being more than one season. Just because of how... Uh, Are you saying you would have been... Uh, just before you continue, put a pin in it. Uh, no, I will not. Well, I just don't want you to forget yeah. where you're going. Um, would, would you have been okay with it ending after season <laughs> one? Like, an ambiguous Yeah, I mean, I would have been of, fine with it just being like that. Like, we don't know what happens yeah. in the hundred years between the two. I understand the, um... Because they'll probably make a series about it at some point. I know that the stars of it are disappointed, and they clearly enjoyed working on the first season and would like to do a second one. <coughs> but apologies. I'm sorry, I have allergies real bad. Um... And it's just like, and I understand that aspect of it, mm. but I don't know. I thought that it ended the way that it ended. I thought could have been a pretty satisfying end of like this ambiguous thing of like this is how Plagueis comes up with the thing for I Anakin never, and all I never that. really thought about. Um, I never really thought that way uh, when I first heard the news. I was honestly really disappointed. Um, I don't like that. I don't like that uh, that Headland kind of came out and was like, "Oh, it's because of the you know racist misogynist fans." Um, maybe, but I I, I got to be honest. I think it's how much the series cost, um, and the fact that the fact that everybody in the streaming game is is cutting down costs. I mean, they're and they're bundling now. Well, they're yeah, I mean, they're bundling with Max, which yeah. is just like, okay, well, weird. Uh, watching football this weekend, I was, I saw commercials 
of of yeah sh- sharing this like cable company who isn't selling you cable they're technically just selling you internet and saying you get this like fifteen dollars a month you get like peacock and max and it's like this is where we are now <laughs> and this is just where it is and you're right and you're seeing more you're seeing a little bit of uh, i think you are seeing a cutback in content. Well, and the MCU just announced it, you know. Uh, it, yeah, because they're so fucking expensive. The co- well, it's COVID 250 shit. 250 bucks to make, the, or 250 you, you million. Take, you take, here's the justification. You take COVID, and then on top of that, you take the strikes, and on top of that, you take the uh, rising cost of everything because of, uh, um, uh, because of what is it, the supply Inflation chain and, shit. And, yeah. Well, it's, it was a big supply chain yeah. thing that happened in the uh, Gaza, whatever. And that's the justification for it. And then there's also, we've talked about it so many times, it's unsustainable for these stockholders to be like, we want more numbers yeah. every month. Like, yeah. it's just not sustainable. So now they're looking at it instead of going, okay, they're going, well, we're not making enough money. So how do we make more money without getting more subscribers? Well, we fucking slash cost like a <coughs> motherfucker. And that's eat what's this going project on here. here, eat this project for tax, re- you know. Yeah. And, or license it. You're seeing well, so much of it too. It was like Max was the first one with. First of all, again HBO Max and yeah. turning it into Max and all yeah. that stuff, which is so but stupid. <laughs> Batman Cape Crusader, which um, I have been enjoying. I've only I haven't watched every episode. I've watched the first I think two, three, three. I think maybe three, two and a half, four, three. Five. Not sure, but I am enjoying that. Seven. But, but that's an example. That's something that they had. That was produced for HBO Max that Warner Brothers didn't want, and then licensed it out to Prime. And and well, the frustrating thing to me is they're again defeating their purpose. And this is something that anybody that could wa- watch this see this was going to happen because it was already working on one thing. Doesn't mean we'll, we can go on a whole separate tangent on that, but. Oh. When it comes to the acolyte, I think it was a combination of things. I mm. think, I think that the negativity of it online sure definitely played some part into it. I don't think I truthfully think Star Wars as a brand, as a reputation, doesn't have a great track record. And I think, t- let's be completely honest here, from an objective standpoint, and I'm saying this as you and me and other people that I've talked to about this that have come through with a good faith view of this, Disney has not been delivering their best when it's come to Star Wars. They just haven't. So it's a little bit of that, and it, I think it's a little bit of the chuds and how they treat these people. Oh, yeah. It's a combination of things. It's much, never one it thing. It cost $200 million yes, for eight, they had to, eight episodes. They had to cut down and have the one scene with the Wookiee and just say that and then have him killed off screen because he was too expensive. And yeah, it isn't sustainable to make $250 million movies, let alone TV shows, eight episodes, eight hours of content you're creating. So I, 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 I want to I I talk about something because uh, before... Uh, before there's a, a Star Wars book that I'm not sure if it's legacy or if it's recognized as canon uh, in the Disney stuff, um, you know, Legends or whatever it is, um, but it's called Splinter of the Mind's Eye, and it came out early in uh, early in the 80s or late late 70s. Yeah, and it was basically it was a script that I can't remember who wrote it, but they wrote a script for a sequel to Star Wars in case it didn't do well. To do if the a, first one didn't do well, like yeah, this would be okay. to do a cheaper, a cheap sequel. Gotcha. And the way that they kind of, uh, and my brother reminded me of this, and the way that they kind of did it, it was brilliant. Is that they had all of the characters, you know, uh, stranded on one planet. Yeah. And it was a foggy planet, so not a lot of location scouting. It it's a really uh, it's a really tense like psychological drama, really. Mm-hmm. And it's a it would be great for somebody to do that. However, obviously Star Wars took off. Yeah. And he did whatever. Um or uh somebody can probably correct me on that, but that came from a script that they were planning on doing just in case. And to me, 
I was talking to my brother about it, and he he's he's telling me, you know, that's the problem is that you the scope of it. Star Wars feels like it always has to be so epic. Yeah. In every way. TV shows even. Mm-hmm. We've seen that with The Mandalorian. We saw that with Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's the whole, it, everything has to be the epic space opera. But every does Every single time. No, and that's, and that is what's been, and it, this is my honest understanding of it, and this is just being a fan of, may, like I've said this before, I never read the comics or the books of the expanded lore and stuff for Star Wars, but I, I have with, uh, but I have with other franchises. Yeah. I have done it with other things that interest me. So I understand that aspect of it. And what's so appealing about that is with Star Wars, you can tell because it's such a vast world and the lore is so dense that you c- you don't have to tell an epic. And and then that that's the but that's the issue running you run into, right? Because you don't have to do that and I think Rogue One is an example of a movie that's really good that isn't that level that has that impact and has a finality to it and then you look at something like Solo which honestly in my opinion gets way too much hate it's a oh, fun it's, movie it's, it's way more fun However, than it is should never it's so in so inconsequential mm. and part of the problem and I think this is another issue with the acolyte itself is we have so much focus even the mandalorian has so much focus on the past and this nostalgia baiting shit and like if you're going to critique disney for anything of the if it, it, it's it's nostalgia baiting it's <clears throat> it's ridiculous well, I mean, look at how much they made off the off of Mandalorian and, and yeah, and uh, th- the the sequel trilogy. And I think someone like, and I think a lot of fans of Star Wars are like me, where I'm in a place of why the High Empire or the High what whatever High Republic High Republic and what um, Mangold wants to do and do like a Swords and Sandals Ben Hur style movie. I still think that's interesting and cool, and I want to see that, but. There's also part of me is like, let's just get the fuck away from this stuff. Like, look, I get it. Everybody knows the original trilogy. Everybody, you know, my generation especially talks about the prequels a lot. And 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 the sequel trilogy has its place. But it's like, let's move the fuck on and go a thousand fucking years in the future. Two thousand years. Because who fucking cares? Can we just all accept that this shit is silly and fun and just right. make it silly and fun. And the other thing, <laughs> and the other thing too, I, and, and here's how fucking... Star Wars has always been silly. Here's how ingrained it is in me. You were like a thousand or two thousand years in the future, and I'm Dude. like, well, <laughs> how would you even know it was Star Wars still? How would you not? You made it up. <laughs> like, you fucking lunatics. That's another thing. Hey, can I just say it? Here's a big problem. Here's a huge big problem. I want you to, I want you to really hear this. I want you to hear this. I want to hear it. And this is someone who loves this stuff. And I want to tell you this. This is someone who loves comic books and pop culture and movies and, 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 and all, all, all this stuff. There are so much bigger things and important things in your life yeah. than to threaten someone's life and threaten everything about them over a silly fucking show. It yeah. is silly. Absolutely. Let me tell you, it is stupid. It is goofy. It is silly, and that's why I love it. But I would never, ever go after someone else over a silly, dumb, fucking light-up sword show. Let's be honest. That's what it is. Grow up. This shit is dumb and silly, and that's what makes it fun. Listen, when you man. Start, All right. wait, well, when you start treating the Force like a real religion... You need to go outside. Please interact with human beings and not a screen. I'm serious. I know. Uh. That's the biggest issue, I think, with this whole fandom and everything in it. You take it way too fucking seriously, man. And I get it. There's something about being passionate and... I want to be very clear. I think it's cool to go to conventions and cosplay and be passionate about this shit and be into it and love it. That's great. I'm not talking about you at all. I am talking about people that make video after video after video, always specifically targeting black characters, always specifically saying, motherfucker said it in the trailer for Acolyte. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers fucking said, this doesn't appeal to me because there's no white guys in it. He fucking said it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ryan Cannell, there's him, there's clips of him saying that uh, every race throughout history has been sl- been slaves. It seems like black people are the only ones that can't get over it. Said that on camera. <laughs> Jesus. Go outside. And for those two pe- those two guys in particular, go outside and walk into traffic. It's space <laughs> And I mean that with my chest. Walk into traffic, please. Um, <laughs> I'm also not saying to someone hit them. I really don't. We really, we just, yeah. Because I have to, and it's the internet. Just I need to be, to I need to be clear. Poisoning I don't want any well. violence to happen to those no, guys. Just but don't. I want them to stop treating this like it's actually... You treat it like this is real policy in real life. You treat this like the force is a thing in real life. It's not, buddy. Like well, I no, understand getting no. lost in a world. Let's, I let's, understand that. Hey, but like you still have to have a line, you let's, know? Let's be honest about this, okay? Yeah, yeah. A lot of this shit is to indoctrinate fucking, you know, small minded people yeah. who have nothing better to do than to be on the internet into the alt right, okay? <laughs> No, it is. Yeah, no, that's, it is. It is. That, that's they appeal to you because you have no friends and all you know is Star You're Wars. You're lonely. Yes. Yes. So it's not about. It's never been about Star Wars or comic books for them. And it's been about how can I recruit more people to this underground hate fest. And that is why when we have covered them, we have done our best. Because I'm making a lot of money doing it. We d- we did do you know there are times that we you know made jokes and done a thing about the comment section but for the most part we attack them oh, yeah. like Jeremy and Ryan and all those guys because we attack them because yeah it's it's I never it's the same thing with You're like fucking the human race as a whole it's the same like, well just, no it's just I, I I try my best to not get mad at the people that listen there are probably people and I guarantee there are people that are subscribed to them and are fucking horrible human beings i oh, guarantee yeah, yeah, it. absolutely but yeah. i also think it's yes most of them are people that you just talked about that are just someone that need that crave social interaction and they're getting it from this group it's just unfortunate it has to be from a group of people that spew slurs and hate speech which is what they do and youtube never enforces their fucking policies on them because they will make money so they don't care because if you really looked into their rules those people violate it constantly it's weird that the nfl is cool with youtube TV presenting their games. <laughs> Shit, did we just fuck ourselves again? <laughs> <laughs> but no, just keep that's what I'm talking about. That's what I get NFL so money. That's what I get so upset about because, on one hand, the there is such a beautiful thing mm. about finding a book, a comic, movie, whatever it is, a property franchise, whatever you want to call it, and. Finding other human beings that love it too and you're passionate about it and you talk. Dude, it's so fucking awesome. That's the whole reason we did this podcast. Started yeah. doing this podcast. Yeah. and Because we started talking about RoboCop. <laughs> you like that too? And, and to think it gets fucking mutilated and destroyed in a stupid algorithmic world that we live in by people like that that don't actually want to truthfully engage with Star Wars and engage with any of it. No, they want to use it as a weapon to you and spew I, their you shit. You and I have been very critical of Star- Disney Star Wars of this show. Hell we are yeah. coming from, and I have, again... The first three episodes, I was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> And by the end of it, I'm like, I'm a changed human being because it's fucking great. And not every, you know, and it's I wasn't just, super happy about the Yoda and Darth Sidious, you know, fucking cameos, but whatever. But when you make targeted, we'll you make targeted attacks at this, uh, 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 Moses, uh, oh, uh, she was in the Obi Wan show, Reva's character. But they pick Reva out of that show to attack the most and yes. make memes about in their mm-hmm. thumbnails about and they do it again with Amandala because Amandala made the mistake of I don't know expressing herself and making a song and <laughs> releasing that talking about it and then that, that gave them fodder for that so then she became their enemy and she talks about she made a video on and put it, put it up on uh, I think Instagram and Twitter I don't even think she uses Twitter anymore probably not but she said in that video I don't really use social media anymore because of people like that and that's what I'm talking about. You're fucking pathetic. It ain't cool, man. It's fucking lame. If your whole purpose <laughs> is to drive other people, like, is to make them 
feel pain of any sort, uh, physical, uh, you know, traumatic, emotional, mental. You know, if that's your whole goal in life, you're a shitty person. And I'm sorry you didn't get enough love growing up. I don't know what it is. But you're a shitty human being. That's that's all there is to it. So stop it. If you're one of those people, and you probably aren't, because there's only 13 so, of you. Yeah. and uh, It frustrates me because I don't, I don't think they, any of you are they get to take this little victory lap because the show gets canceled. So they can fucking and, take Well, the, like I said, Headland came out and was like, it's because of you guys. Like, don't. Give don't them give them, yeah. Yeah, no. Come out and say, hey, it was expensive as fuck. Because that's a big deal. Are you okay? Yeah. Can I, listen. Can I just sit here? Can I just do I the know. show? You're not just sitting there. You're you like, just, you're I bump the table. Oh, gosh. No, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Get to the next topic. Skip along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Uh, I... <sighs> I I have a lot of thoughts about that, and I think that's another frustrating thing. They're going to take that victory lap. And I think there are some legitimate criticisms towards that show, but I never thought that The Acolyte was a horrible, terrible show. I just, it was, it just, the worst I thought was, a lot of it didn't appeal to me, which is fine. I read a review right after I watched the first, what did it come out the first two? Yeah. Okay. I read a review um, before I think I saw it, and it was like, this is the first. Disney Plus thing that feels like a TV show, or the first Star Wars thing that feels like a TV show. And I kind of felt like that. I agreed with that a little bit. Uh, I I didn't... It wasn't my style. I, I, like, if I took it as a whole... If I take it as a whole now, based on, you know, what... the With the twists and the turns and everything, and how the, the, uh, the story changed, and how the storytelling changed... Yeah. You know, if I take it as a whole, it's pretty awesome. But yeah, those first like three or four episodes, you're like, "What the fuck are we <laughs> doing here?" You know, like especially that third episode. There's no defending that episode. Ugh. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about that at Christmas. Wow. Or Thanksgiving. Uh, no, you never know. Maybe uh, those characters show up later. You never know. It's some other thing. Who knows? How far did we get before I sang? Not very far, if you technically count the 35 seconds. No, 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 no. What time is it now? Uh, 22 something. Yeah, fuck yeah. But you did it. Not like- singing for 22 minutes. Kill me! <laughs> uh, That's real funny, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, dude. Uh, so this is news that I just saw pop up that I didn't know was a thing. Ooh. Uh, they're getting another Wolfman remake. It's just called Wolfman. From uh, oh, it's also okay. coming from uh, Lee Wanell. Oh, he did okay. the Invisible Man remake from 2020, which actually pretty solid movie. Yeah, never seen. I it. enjoyed it. Pretty good. I heard uh, things, good things. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah, to watch the yeah, teaser yeah. for that, but we could talk about that. I don't want to watch a teaser. Fuck you, then. Wow. All right, we're going to talk about Marvel's Vision Show. That's still a thing. Because who knows when they cancel things anymore. Uh, but it's interesting, because you had a topic you want to talk about, and it's a good segue into it. Uh, so Picard actor Todd uh, Stashwick, Stashwick will be in the Vision series. So, uh, yeah, by the way, uh, Picard beat me up when you were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yes, Todd Stashwick, will, Stashwick, who played a key role in season three of Star Trek Picard, has joined Paul Bettany and James Spader, which, by the way, are they bigger back Ultron? Because James Spader's coming back. That'd be fucking cool. That's We haven't talked about that because I forgot about that. Yeah, they got James Spader to come back. Cool. So... What love James we Spader. doing White Vision and fucking Ultra? I don't know. What's then, it about? I don't know. It's super vague. So this is supposed to be super vague. So uh, this is going to be Vision Quest, by the way. Uh, so he is going to be joined rejoined with Terry Metalis, uh, who did Picard season three. He was a showrunner uh, Picard. He's going to be the showrunner. Stop running this. it. Stop watching it after episode one of season two. By the way, uh, Hollywood Reporter is the article I'm referring Which to. I 
I'm I've heard season three brings it back, and it's I, really, really I've good. I've heard but I don't know. that if I stuck it out through season two, that it's like, wow. But he looked so fucking old in that first... Oh, uh, it's terrible. And at the end of season one, he becomes like... Do you want to spoil it? Can't I spoil don't it. care. At the end of season one, Picard gets his uh, consciousness transferred into a, a, a body like Data's. But it's different because he's still going to live, his brain is still going to live the allotted, you know, time. Yeah. And his body will, but his body won't age anymore until he dies or whatever. Yeah. And then we come back in season two and he's like, hello, I'm Picard, let's kick some ass. And it's like, yeah. whoa, <laughs> didn't you just get transferred? Into I am a, not alive. I am not, I'm like a cyborg All and right. shit. So, yeah, more, a little bit more on the uh, information on uh, Vision Quest, mm. which, again, I it's keep called forgetting. Vision Quest? Yeah. Okay. Which is a better name. Which is a... Than Vision Vision. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so funny. All right. Uh, what we did was we took WandaVision and we just took Wanda and we just replaced it with Vision. Vision, 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 Vision. I'm not sure. Vision, Vision. Vision, uh, Vision. So, yeah, Spader is reprising his role as Ultron. Ooh. Uh, he Tell will, me more. Uh, it's still uh, all, uh, had a hand. It's something about him coming back, but we're not sure if it's going to be a robot or human, mm. like an android. Uh, or, well, or like, uh, or like, but a, how is he uh, going, Arnim Zola from my like Winter is, Soldier? How is he coming back unless like an Arnim? You know what I'm saying? But he killed Vision. Killed the, the last remaining Ultron. Like he kept jumping to bodies, and he finally killed him. The last one. And he's like, yeah, it was worth a shot or whatever. And he just... Mm-hmm. So maybe they're saying that, like, Ultron, this is a new Ultron that's recreated from inside the consciousness of the white vision. Like, I don't know. Regardless, I'm interested. Remember that thing that took apart the vision, that uh, that agency or whatever? Uh, Yeah. Maybe they were trying to recreate Ultron, and they did, but it's flawed, so it's like... Even more Ultron? No, like he can't escape from whatever he's in, you know? But do uh, Ultimate Ultron... <laughs> no, I'm saying, like, if Ultron was yeah, able yeah. to be alive, like, yeah. we would have known about it by now. But this way, they can play with it. But he is sentient, so I don't know. He's sentient. Sentient. Like, not like the other cyborgs. They have no feelings. Apparently, the show will be tackling Vision's search for a new purpose in life, and mm. says that Stashwick will or Stashwick will play an assassin who is on the trail of the android. So, yeah. At least Paul Bettany's getting work. <laughs> Good for him. Uh, that uh, the the most intriguing thing is the Ultron aspect of it, and how that is going to come into place you gonna be the antagonist of the series are we gonna get like the team up story well apparently the wonder man series is still a thing which is weird right yeah i mean i don't know i don't know their tv is kind of all over the place what what is because you still have daredevil coming out at some point (laughs) right which where does that fit in look where does it it fit in i'll watch it of course you'll watch it hey don't call me a shill I'm you totally are, sure. you Marvel shill. I'm totally a fucking shill. The truth hurts, dude. The truth hurts. Wear it. Wear it? Where are you wearing it to? Hey, that's none of my business. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't even know where to go from there. Well, so there's a popular Ooh. phrase. Wrap it up. Wrap, wrap it up. Yo, I'll take it. Oh, wait. That's by the... What'd you do? Fun, fabulous Thunderbirds starring... Starring. So, uh, we're talking about uh, Picard a little bit, and this is kind of in reference to uh, Star Trek. And uh, one of the things I thought was kind of interesting is... I'm I'm always... I've always been a Star Trek fan, and uh, some of the movies that I really enjoyed growing up that I still watch today are like the... Um, the two, three, and four, I think, I can't remember what it's called, but it's, I think, loosely called the Spock trilogy, um, of the Star Trek movies. And one of my favorite parts is Scotty, um, you know, in four, he, he does, he does, uh, he invents, uh, transparent aluminum and gives it to this guy. It's really funny. 
Anyway, there has been a uh, popular phrase called Beam Me Up Scotty. Uh, it's Beam Me Up Scotty from the show, and it's never actually attributed because he's never actually said it in the show. And so I'm reading this thing um, about this article about all these different ways that the misquotation uh, in his actual obituary, James Doohan, he's referenced as the character who responded to the command, beam me up Scotty. And Doohan... They never said it in the show. Never. And Doohan himself chose to use the phrase as the title of his 1996 biography. Now, there's been near misses, and I won't get into all that, but uh, there's been a couple of different close things. The complete phrase was eventually said by William Shatner in the audio audio adaptation of his non-canon novel, non-canon novel, Star Trek, The Ashes of Eden. Okay. So I'm reading about all this, and there's, you know, uh, um, the first story of, or the first uh, use of it can be found uh, 10 years after Star Trek's airing in 1966, Uh, So in 1976, in a publication of the Royal Aeronautical Journal, it describes a certain routine as, quote, a sort of, quote, beam me up Scotty routine, quote, unquote. Over time, the phrase has been extended to beam me up Scotty. There's no intelligent life down here. Uh, You've seen bumper stickers and T-shirts like that and whatnot. That's never been said on the show, anything like that. But what got me really uh, down here was I'm, I'm reading all this stuff about this phrase and then. The phrase has also been used as slang for certain drugs. Uh, An Oxford reference page defined Beam Me Up Scotty as, quote, a mixture of fencyclidine and cocaine, and to, quote, talk to Scotty, quote, high off Scotty, see Scotty, etc. I'm I'm high off the Scotty, man. And I'm just like, (laughs) I'm talking to Scotty, man. (laughs) Like, what the fuck are you fucking talking about? The phrase has been referenced by Baxter County Sheriff's drug slang definitions. And can I just tell you, Baxter County Sheriff's, you have no fucking clue. They're the Squatch Detective. Oh, my uh, God. (laughs) It is also referenced in the book Vice Slang by Tom Dalzell and Terry Victor for crack cocaine and to describe beamers or beamers as those taking said drugs. I smoked crack twice (laughs) in Denver. (laughs) And I never, (laughs) ever... I would have done it a lot more if people were like, you want to get beamed up, dude, from Scotty? I would have been like, fuck yeah, dude. Let's go watch some Next Generation or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to get roasted for that one. He was on, the, he was on, he was on TOS. That, that's the original series. I know, I know. Okay. Why don't you calm down? Do you know? I, I never heard anybody hey go man, like, you want to get beamed you wanna, up? You want to talk to Scotty? I smoked crack twice, and I would have done it. First of all, and I used to do a lot, and I used to do a lot of cocaine, and that Scotty shit sounds cool. So find me some. Um, <laughs> no, I don't know what that other shit fencyclidine is, but put that in my car. Well, all right, sounds good. Woo, let's do it. I'm just saying, uh, it, it, nobody ever said, you know, you want to talk to Scotty or any of that shit. So just calm down with all that. You know, I, I just I don't understand. Crack cocaine. If somebody said to me, like, at a bar, like, hey, you want to talk to Scotty? I would have been like, who the fuck is Scotty? Because I figured it would have been one of their buddies named Scotty or some shit. But then someone's like, do you want to smoke crack cocaine? I would have been like, yeah, let's go do that. Why do you got to fucking be so vague and, like, so roundabout? Just fucking say it. So it's funny. Let's go smoke some. Crack cocaine. You want want me to smoke some? And then afterwards... Well, crack cocaine. And then afterwards, then ask me to smoke some. Yeah. <laughs> well, to pay for it. <laughs> you know how much that costs? One million dollars, <laughs> bitch. All right. So uh, it's funny you say um, about the beam me up thing. How that was never said in the show. It's also like uh, Jerry Seinfeld never said, "What's the deal?" Like that was like he obviously makes that style of observational comedy. It's the same thing, but Star he never Wars. said that. Uh, so uh, the yeah. uh, um, uh, Luke, I'm your father. He never says that, but that's what everybody <laughs> Luke references. Said, Luke, what's the deal with your parent? Your- Luke, what's the deal <laughs> with your dad? <laughs> what's the deal with what Obi Wan's filling your head with? <laughs> If you want a donut, have a whole donut. Don't eat the whole. <laughs> that's that's an actual. 
Jerry Seinfeld. Long. It's a long box. <laughs> what are you selling? You just farted over there. <laughs> You're like, ugh. Uh, it's, uh, a, it's the long box. <laughs> Let me whip this out. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Can I get a witness? So, uh, again, we're still working on some things for the con for the show yeah, and things we want to cover. So he's just like, "Fucking that sucks." It's true. Uh, so t- this week we're gonna do what we call a double wad extended long box. I think you should all write in. On the comments and say, Tyler needs more input on content. I think you should all write in and say, <laughs> this is not Tyler. So I know which ones are and which ones aren't. <laughs> I'm going to open a bunch of fucking I mean, fucking fake Gmails and be like, hey, I'm gonna my, Tyler's I'm going to get my music YouTube channel suspended <laughs> by Bot- botting a bunch of comments on my own fucking... Podcast and YouTube. Spotify channel. is gonna give you the email and say it's your fault. It's your fault. Be mad at yourself. Uh, so by what we mean by double watt extended, we mean uh, that we're gonna do more than one thing that we really been digging. We on. mean big, big things, big if true. Uh, so do you want to do t- like I do two, you do two, or do you want to do I do one, one, you do one, 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 one? All right. Tyler, you've been fingering a fingering package out. over there uh, for... So I went to uh, J.C. and Hobby the other day. Uh, Shout out. Fine. I don't think they want to be shouted out on this show. Sponsors, but we'll see. Sponsor this shit, please. Sponsor the show. We only swear about 70% of the time. Fuck. Yeah, you fucking look. Hang on a second. So uh, my first one is uh, I was at the store the other day and I, I picked up a reprint of uh, Action Comics from uh, the uh, year two thousand. The year two thousand. The year two thousand. Um, and uh, it's actually if you see the the print from the front. Oh my gosh, that is so two thousands on the back. Look at that. Is that you two? No, but you see. Oh yeah. The seal. Um, approval. So, you know, it's pretty cool. Let me see. Um, I wanna, can I look at the back of this? I just want to point something out. Oh, oh so the back of it is uh, L2, which is um, Levi's. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so... Let me... Can I look through it while you're talking about it? Well, no, I got to uh, see it to okay. talk about it. Sorry, dude. I'll stop talking during a long box. No, you're okay. I just I, <laughs> uh, I just got to talk. I just got to bark. Her. Well, I was just saying, are there more ads from like the year two thousand in the no, book? No, there's a, there should be ads. Uh, there's no ads from the original book, which sucks. Oh, that'd be. Cool. I don't know if there were yeah. ads. Uh, you would assume so because that's how. That's always sold my shit. favorite is when you get like used books and you like you can see the old Dude, ads. And all the ads that when I was growing up were awesome. Like they had Hostess ads where like Spider Man's fighting some like spi- fighting Doc Ock, and he's like. I'm going to rob this bank. And Spider-Man's like, like, how about if I throw you some hostess cakes? And he's like, all right. <laughs> while, you know, I'm I was these, gonna say, while I'm eating these, Spider-Man's going to web me up and take me to jail now, again. My brain would have been like, why don't you just make like a fake hostess villain? And then like Spider-Man's like, it's still about webs. I got to use the cream. And then he just wow. like shoots his Where were you in shoots 1972? <laughs> shoots Not his, born. Shoots his fucking Spider-Man cream. <laughs> Jesus. So, um, one of the uh, great, it's uh, Action Comics number one, it's a reprint of the whole issue, and one of the things, uh, it, the wraparound, there's Paul Levitz, the executive vice president and publisher of DC at the time, it looks like, um, he writes this, and it's really, actually, really cool, uh, and I'd like to read it to you, because it actually sounds very prescient. Uh, a thousand, this is written 24 years ago, of course. A thousand years ago, the state of the art that combines words and pictures was the illuminated manuscript, a carefully crafted, fragile document telling a tale only a select few would ever be privileged to read. A thousand years from now, the art form may evolve so that each of us takes the raw electrons from the air and turns them into our own fantasies, moving and speaking on command for the world to access. In between those forms, we have comics. And the reason why I'm reading that is because that second part is... Almost here, isn't it? Doesn't it feel like that? Yeah. 
Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. So Superman, this is the first appearance of Superman, and uh, unlike, uh, you know, we've heard the stories about Spider-Man, whatever, um, and he was basically, Stanley was like, hey, let me just see what this fucking- Spider is on the wall. Spider-Man, I like it. That's how he does it. No. <laughs> he shoveled it in to- ama- cause- yeah, Amazing fantasy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, God. Sorry, I'm talking during a long No, blocks. I don't care. <laughs> Fucker. Um- <laughs> As a, as a distant planet was destroyed by old age, a scientist placed his infant son within a hastily devised spaceship launching it toward Earth. And, you know, a passing motorist discovering the sleeping babe, attendants, uh, like, there's there's no mention of the Kents, you know, uh, uh, in the story at all. It's just, uh, and, and it's, his, his uh, d- physical structure is millions of years advanced of their own. That's why he can leap. And has tremendous, you know, uh, strength and faster than an express train and blah, blah, blah. A scientific explanation of Clark Kent's amazing So is this the introduction of Superman? Basically, I thought it was Action Comics number one. It is Action Comics. Oh, sorry. I thought you had a different But it's all stories. There's, it's the first story. And it's really funny. Oh, yeah. It's a collection of stories, right? Yeah. But the first story in it is Superman. Gotcha. Everything else is just crap, but we'll get to that. Um... Superman, like, there's no plot to it, and, like, he's trying to get to the governor, and he, like, tears a steel door off, and he gets the, it's just, it's really basic shit. It's it's basic shit. <laughs> he's, 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 he wants the governor to overturn, like, a, a, a death sentence because he has the real murderer, and then he, you know, goes out to stop a, hurry, Kent, a phone tip, wife beating at 211 Court Avenue. I'm on wife. my way. Jesus. Yeah. A wife. Yeah. And Superman goes in there and kicks his ass. Uh, and then, you know, he he takes Lois Lane out, and it's very basic art. Lois Lane gets kidnapped, and then he, you know, crushes the thing. And it's, it's very basic shit, okay? The plot is really not there. The dynamic art that we see now in comics is, is, is a far cry from what we see here. And... You know, so begins the startling adventures of the most sensational strip character of all time, Superman, a physical marvel, a mental wonder. Superman is destined to reshape the destiny of a world. Yeah. Now, and that was 1930, what, one or something, 19? Something know. like that, yeah, 30, yeah, it was before. But, right. but again, there's, there's no, there's no supervillains, it's just basic, like, he's just guys. doing shit. Yeah, he's just basically taking care of street crime and shit, and he can't yeah. fly, it's not... It's very it's it's You're stated very around. clearly. Yeah, Superman leaps out into the night. Um he's jumping over telephone poles and shit. Anyway, scaring the crap out of the crook. But then we get to the fun part. And there's a story called Chuck Dawson, uh by about a, he's about a cowboy. And he <laughs> Hey, what's going on? I hey, got him. Hey, action. Adios, Jeopardy. Tell the 4G gang I'll be seeing him. And then we got Zatara Master Magician. And the tigress attacks, and it's a chick in an orange and black striped shirt. What okay. a super villain. And we get to the next story after that is um, a uh. wonderfully a double-page spread of just almost, almost <laughs> just blatant racism. Yeah. Uh, the South Sea Strategy by Captain Frank Thomas. Then we got Sticky Mitt Stimson, which is a, uh, a Benny Hill type of cartoon. The Adventures of Marco Polo is illustrated by Sven Elvin. And I was telling you off the air, uh, back in the day, you know, uh, guys just did this piecemeal, you know, work for hire. That's yeah, how yeah, they got yeah. Kirby, right? Well, back in the day in this time, you know, people would do like five cents a page or, you know, whatever. They didn't want anybody in their family to know they did this shit. Yeah. Um, so Pep Morgan is the next story. And it is really racist because he has to stop this cheating guy, this cheating boxer. And the other cheating boxer just happens to be, quote, uh, what is it? The Wild Bushman, Australian. I think he's supposed to be an, uh, I don't know. I think that's what they called Aborigines back then. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty horrible. Uh, but, you know, uh, but hey, you know, Pep, Pep Morgan stops the evil, you know. And then we got Scoop Scanlon, Five Star Reporter. I'm not doing anything but writing stories. And look out, people. And then we got Tex Thompson, which is just a wonderful pastiche of uh, misplaced patriotism, uh, abuse of, of all kinds of people. 
Uh, and cowboys. And cowboys. This is pretty awful. And then at the end, we have uh, Stardust by the Stargazer, and it's just these weird, like, Charles Boyer smoked as many as four packs of cigarettes a day during the filming of The Garden of Allah. Every time he started to smoke, he was called to act in a scene. Wheeler and Woolsey, two of Hollywood's most popular comic... Are you sure? I've never heard of them. Uh, ...are incorporated as a team. They'll show you the papers if you doubt... And and then at the very back page, it's fun because they have the actual credits of what they could find. Yeah. Chuck Dawson, a story and art by H. Fleming, uh, a story and art by Unknown, Alger, Sven Elvin, Fred Gardiner, Will Eli, Bernard Bailey. Like, all these guys were like, I don't want nobody fucking knowing I do this shit. <laughs> um, and with fairly good reason. But, you know, it's... I, I like to do... Uh, um, I like to talk about these older comics like Fast, Fantastic Four number one and, you know, Amazing Fantasy number 15. And the reason why is because it's we love comic books and they come from someplace. Yeah. And if you don't know where they come from, then you're kind of I think you're cheating yourself a little bit. And so I, I, I definitely recommend if you can find a uh, reprint of Action Comics number one just to understand like, wow, look at how far we've come. Yeah. You know, like, look at this crap. Like, it is crap. The reason why Action Comics number one, if you can find a mint copy, is so expensive is because there's, like, three left. Yeah. It's not because it's a great fucking book at all. It's uh. a shitty book. But it's the first appearance of Superman. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's where the money is. Be like, it's the first appearance of this. Yeah. This but character. it helps that there's, like, three left. Right. Uh, like, as far as we know. Rarity of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But... Again, worth uh, checking out, and and one of those books that you read. If you're used to comic books now, you're you're not gonna read a lot of comic books with that kind of art. Well, and that '30s art, and it's hard to remember what. It, it's all very uh, the same. Like it, it doesn't look like different artists did different yeah. stories. It looks like one artist did all of it. You know. Yeah, um, and because there's and like the, a style. We, we talked that you about use, this. Yeah. If you go back and you read like Stan Lee books and stuff, you'll see how wordy they are. Yeah, and uh, you and I talked about as as artists became more prevalent, mm. and you're seeing you know like Frank Miller and like Todd McFarlane and those kind of guys. Yeah, come onto the scene in the late '80s and the '90s. That's when you start seeing more of. Uh, more cinematic, more visual comic books. Well, see, and, and you see more of that now. And uh, yeah. East of West is an example. That Hickman book. Okay. <laughs> the Hickman book that Where I was talking that your... about. They did almost a whole entire issue that had no words. They did almost the G.I. Joe thing where there's no words. So Great book. Great book. But yeah, Frank Miller uh, was one of the guys who kind of, and, and McFarlane helped him, uh, you know, kind of were built off of that. The whole double page uh, brooding spread and, and like three word you know captions like he's here somewhere in the night you know <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah and McFarlane did it with fucking uh, with uh, Venom and shit you know look it's 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 fun you but- know that guy only gave me that 200 bucks out of that the fan that suggested that what the fan that came up with the idea for Venom only got like 200 bucks out of oh, it oh yeah and then Venom is like one of the biggest characters Marvel has. But that guy must have got more than that. But how would he how would he have known at all? Uh but so uh you done with yours so I could do mine and then we go back to yours and then back to mine, you know. Uh my first long box, my first selection is a movie that it took me like three or four times to watch. Uh which I mentioned last week was a joke that like Periodically, you're an old man now. As, as it well, as my son kept waking up. Gosh darn it! But uh, I finally got a chance to finish it, and uh, I want to talk about the Fall Guy. Ooh. Uh, which, and again, I had this conversation with my wife uh, the day after we watched it, where it was like, I think Glenn, you 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 talked about Tom Cruise being one of the last remaining uh, movie stars. I think Glenn Powell is getting up there, and I think Ryan Gosling is there for sure. I think whatever Ryan Gosling is in, I want to see it because I I think he is a really he is a really good actor, and I think when he does he he reminds me. I was talking with 
her about it too, where he does remind me a lot of a little bit of Ryan Reynolds, but I think his 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 performance in Barbie and like his humor is a lot I think a little bit more subtle. Like he is fucking amazing in, in Barbie. He's great in that. Can movie. I say yeah. He's great in this. Like I love like he Can I say he one carries thing? this movie. Can yeah. I say one thing? The reason why I, I said uh you're you're I agree with you. Um, the reason why I said Tom Cruise is like the last great movie star is because he's like, I think we're moving, we're going to eventually move away from movie theaters. That's a, yeah. And I feel like that and for, even, even though the fall guy didn't make and it, but Ryan Gosling money. is a well-respected and there are a lot of people who will see his movies, but I, I think if you look at his box office, I don't think he's anywhere near. I mean, Blade Runner isn't his fault. Okay. No. Fall Guy again is a very fun movie. But you know what I mean. But like, I can't. I I'm don't, saying I, I yeah. don't think Ryan Gosling can get the majority of public out to well, theaters like Tom Cruise did I with don't, Maverick. I don't think people. That's all I'm thinking. I don't think people got to see this movie because I think that didn't it go right to streaming. No, oh. I mean it did eventually. It did pretty quickly because it did make. And this is the problem. This money took a little bit more money. Or this money. This movie took a little bit more I've money. I've heard nothing but good stuff. Because they used... <laughs> Real stunts. This is what's frustrating. Because it's a little bit of... It's a little bit of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because you could say, well, we'll save money and do CG, but it looks like shit. And we still have all this other money going into this. But we could add a little bit more to our budget, spend a little bit more money, have more practical events, but or practical stunts, which is great, but... Then you gotta hope it's behind a big streamer that you know really wants to believe in it and put money into it, or you gotta hope it makes a bunch of money. And that's unfortunate. And this money, this is, and I never saw watching this movie, enjoying this movie, at home. Uh, I still think, yeah, this was. If you saw this in the theater, this is a fun movie. But I just think that. <sighs> It just to me didn't seem like a movie that was gonna be like a top box office movie. I thought the money that it was gonna make was what it was gonna be, and it's just a failure just because of how big of the budget was. Like it didn't seem like this was gonna be a huge movie, which is crazy too that it didn't work because it had a perfect storm of the fact that there wasn't a Marvel movie around it, and there wasn't. I don't know. It's just I, a, yeah. I heard it, nothing. That, but good that aspect is unfortunate because the movie itself is really fun. I I watched. <clears throat> Excuse me. I watched the extended cut on uh, Peacock, so I watched like two and a half hour version. Very fun movie. Great. I think the dialogue's fun. Uh, David uh, Leitch, Leitch, Leitch. I can't remember how they say his name. I think it's Leitch. The guy who did Deadpool two did this, and um, he also has. I think he works with. I don't know if it's his stunt team, but the stunt team that worked on this did like John Wick and a bunch. Has done a bunch of stunt work. And uh, I think it's like North 87 or something like that. And uh, there's some crazy stunts in this movie. Yeah. And almost, a lot of it is practical. And it is kinda, just... If you're they, making they a broke movie a about stunt guys, you kind of have yeah. to do practical they, stunts. They broke a record because they've rolled a car eight times. That's fucking insane. That's awesome. but And that's something they point out in the movie that they don't think about is like the stunt guys get to do all the cool shit. But they also get beaten to shit because they're doing r- crazy over the top. I don't know if it's stuff. changed, but as far as I knew, they don't have a lot of insurance. <laughs> I mean, how do you when you're literally getting set on fire? Think about that. That's Think what about I'm that. Saying. You go all the money most you people, make, They should be getting most people great medical care. And again, this movie kind of highlights that too. Of like most people, you say like you go home like, oh man, it was a rough day at work. Such this thing happened. And this thing, you know. Whereas like, yeah, it was a rough day at work. I had to get hit by a car and I had to get set on fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I had to get punched and uh, the, fall down a flight of stairs. The, they this again. What makes this movie work is how committed it is and how committed everybody is to just making a really fun action flick. And the fact that they reuse uh, "I Was Made for Loving You" by Kiss constantly throughout the movie is funny to me because like. It comes on, the regular song comes on, but then if you listen closely throughout the movie, there's like an orchestral score of that song, like faintly playing in the background in different parts of the movie. 
And it's just That's probably one of the only Kiss songs I like because it's so I was made it's so for loving blatant, you, It's so blatantly disco like, cash grab. Disco music, yeah. The only band of that time that got away with doing a disco type song was the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Well, because they already had stolen the blues, they might as well steal. I got me your emotional rescue. But anyway, uh, what are you doing? I had to take my headset because of my allergies and pressure on my face. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) uh, There's a couple of shots that are like really ridiculous. I'm like, oh wow, that's like we're going here. Like, like of course, you make a movie about stuntmen, you have to make some pretty crazy, ridiculous stunts. So, I I enjoyed it a lot. I I wish it would have made more money at the box office. That's unfortunate. Uh, I'm part of the problem. Maybe I should have seen it in the theater. Dick. <laughs> you are such a dick. Oh, Emily Blunt's great in this as well. Winston Duke. Like, the, the whole cast is really good. I, but Ryan Gosling is just... he. The reason I say he's such a... I, I really believe he's a movie star is he has just so much charisma. Yeah. Like, he's just so much fun to watch. And this is just... A very very enjoyable action movie, and he's definitely got it. There's actually a documentary of it too, of what happens, of like Is the that your stunt. Box? <laughs> no, but uh, oh, you're just trying to cram a bunch of shit into one. There's huh? a stunt where it's a free fall stunt, and mm. it's a huge free fall stunt. And it's like, wow, I can't believe they actually got that on film. Like that's fucking crazy. How far? I don't know. Watch the documentary, bitch. Whoa, where'd that come from? Uh yeah, so check out the Fall Guy. It's on Peacock. I watched the extended cut, <sighs> so you could do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, my foot hit the. What the hell? All right, fuck you. Wow. How's that? And also, I want to say, my favorite kind of movie, and this is no bullshit. My one of my favorite. Don't kind bullshit of... me. I'm fucking serious. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> So some of my favorite movies are movies about fake movies, and I love movies about fake movies so much. I don't know why. I just do. I just do. Tropic Thunder, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a movie about Does a fake that movie. apply? Does that apply to Three Amigos? No, no, because that's a real movie or whatever. Re- fake people in a real setting. Yeah. Well, it's that's very yes. yeah. Does that apply to Blazing Saddles? No. Because at the end of it... Because they just break the fourth wall at the end. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Also, one last one. Okay. <clears throat> Does that also apply to um, the part in uh, um, about- Spaceballs where uh, Darth Helmet actually like slices one of the white guys in half? Uh, he did it. <laughs> right? No, because again, that's just that's fourth just wall. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's such an underrated. Fucking Christ! That's such, that's a, such an underrated. That's part. such a really underrated joke. Uh, I forgot it. He did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! One one of the best. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I'm, are you done with your? Uh, I'm done. I just like I realize that like a lot of movies that I like are movies about fake movies. You could also say that, but I would say you could say that about Galaxy Quest. Because oh, yeah. in the Galaxy and Three Amigos, technically, because both those scenarios, they're fake actors. The real actors playing fake actors in in fake movies. You know what I mean? Like Galaxy Quest is a fake TV show. Well, okay. Three Amigos were fake silent Galaxy movies. Galaxy Quest you know and, what I mean? and and Three Amigos are I mean, okay. Because you have to say that because very, Galaxy Quest st- almost stole the entire plot of Three Amigos. Hey, well, hang on, hang on, hang on now. Well, I got I love these two movies. I love them both. I love I them. I know both. you do. Um, the. Uh, the protagonists in Three Amigos are uh, largely inept. Uh, the uh, but they don't they aren't aware that what. Uh, yeah, I guess they're pretty. You got to say because there there's the same plot, it's the same. But that's what I mean. I don't care. I enjoy this movie. Oh yeah, no, but I wouldn't put them into the sure whatever. You could also say that if you were into Entourage, you could say that because that's yeah, I don't all watch about that shit. being a fake. I don't actor. watch that shit. I don't like it. Because that's for fucking chud dickheads. You know who it's for? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe fuck yourself. He's an executive producer. I, um, yeah. 
Uh, or uh, but what, uh, next piece of shit for you. Go oh. for it. Oh fuck you, dude! It's late. We were late. We're late. It's time to go. Get your ass out of here. Uh, I was also at the uh, comic book store. Uh, oh, you nerd! The other day, uh, freaking nerd. I picked up Action Comics and I saw this on the shelf and it was Al Ewing. It's from Boom Comics, uh, Boom Studios, and it's called uh, "We Only Find Them When They're Dead." And uh, Captain Malik and the crew of the Vihan 2 are in search of the only resources that matter and can only be found by harvesting the giant corpses of alien gods found on the edge of human space. While other autopsy ships and explorers race to salvage the meat, minerals, and metals that sustain the human race, Malik sees an opportunity to finally break free from the system by being the first to find a living god. Ooh. Um, the artwork is it's an indie book, huh? Oh yeah, the artwork is fucking incredible. Um, when when the god wakes up, oh, you shit. see the face, yeah, the lasers, and the ship is way over here. Or the light coming out. I mean, and yeah. they're just like these, and there's you know, and, and there's just there's the part where that where they're uh, where where they're um, cut they're cutting the cheek of the. Uh, Shit, I'm getting there. Uh, but uh, but the whole story is it's it's largely the artwork really makes it a lot. Um, it's it's interesting, but what they're saying is like at some point in the future, uh, all the resources are gone from everything. But yeah. but they are able to find somehow they are able to find um, these giant corpses at the end of human space. And I'm trying to get one so you can show, uh, so I can show you what it looks like when they're cutting up their cheek, because they go and they get and they they get like, uh, yeah, here it is. Um, they cut into the they they do a claim on the on the god's cheek. Okay. And they just cut it up into meat patties. And just to use eat it to eat. Huh. They find they find that these giant corpses are coming up so. It, it jumps into a world that's already, you know, established, right? Yeah, so you've yeah. got to kind of figure shit out. It starts off with this Captain Malik, and, like, he's a young kid, and his mom is showing him her first, showing him uh, his first god, because yeah. she, she runs an autopsy ship. And he's like, why is it not moving? And then it goes, here's the big, pa- you know, double-page spread is, is, why is it not moving? Yeah, man. And uh, it, throughout the story, it, this is the first book, uh, The Seeker. There's another book called The... I can't remember, um, but I'm going to get that one. It's uh, really, really great. Uh, I, I've, I've gotten more... It's a um, boom comics book. Well, it's Al Ewing. Yeah. And I loved Immortal Hulk. Like, love it. And and, and he did... I, I Didn't he do Defenders, too? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, give me a... Yeah. Break me off a slice of that, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, yeah. but I saw it and, and the, the, the title is so fucking interesting, yeah, really, yeah. you know, and I was like, well, drawn to that. And then I started reading it. And again, the art is really, really good. The plot is, again, it takes a little bit to kind of get going, but the artwork is so compelling. And by about halfway through, by the end of the first issue, cause it's collects one through five, by the end of the first issue, you're hooked. You're just like, okay, what the fuck? Like, what are we doing here? And it's uh, it's really really incredible. And the the end of the book, which is also the end of number five, is is a crazy fucking twist. Like I can't give it away. Um, and the whole book is nine ninety nine. Actually, Jesus the whole time is nine ninety nine. Yeah. For a five issue, like that would have been twenty it's bucks usually, from fucking well, Marvel or some shit. Usually, that's what Image does. They'll do like the ten dollars for the first volume, and then they'll jack it up. To the like second one is ten bucks too. In this, well, yeah. I'm just uh, like they're saying, like, oh, hey, yeah, I'm sure they we do. know we can't get twenty bucks for this because we're Boom Studios, so we're gonna sell it for ten. And you know what? It's a better quality book anyway. Wow. There you go. Marvel, Say it with your chest. Fuck Marvel, man. Fuck Marvel, Marvel man. man. Nah. All right, so I'm going to talk about that it. That sound is a hundred podcasts being shut off. A <laughs> hundred. Only a hundred because that's, that's how many. That's the sound of ten podcasts <laughs> being shut off. You give us too much credit, Mo Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we sing it again? No. <laughs> As I was doing the fucking notes. Yeah. Dirt, dirt, dirt. 
What are you doing? Rising up. No, that's not what I was doing. But anyway, I want to talk about a book without pictures with words. Whoa, what the fuck? I don't do those kind of books here. I don't read. Oh, is there at least little illustrations every once in a while? Are you going to tell me there's a bunch of words together making oh, a sentence? Oh, it's another Joe Hill book. And another bunch of sentences making a paragraph? Let me um, just go ahead and do this during this. So yeah, shut your hole. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's not very nice. Hey, uh, hey why, why do you keep turning so up? So I am uh, trying to be a uh, completionist for... Uh, Joe Hill books, because uh, I actually read, the first Joe Hill book I ever read was the book called Horns, and that was, when I read it, was his third book, first book of his I read, and then I read Nosferatu, Nosferatu, uh, which is a 700 plus page book, and then I read The Fireman at some point, which was another 700 page book. Can I ask you uh, about Nosferatu? Uh yeah. Does it have anything to do with like the actual movie or like? No, it the, it's a clever name on the book because it's about he's a vampire, but he's not like a blood sucking vampire. It's more like a energy like soul sucking vampire. So he takes these kids and he puts them in his Rolls Royce, and as they're in the car, he's like slowly sucking their life force out of them. You know, it's not cool taking their. Souls. Not cool. Uh, yeah. So that, and then I read the 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 fireman, but I and I also read um, Heart Shaped Box. So this that this book I'm talking about now, the fifth book that I read of his, and I think he has six or seven. He's also got a new one coming. I'm like, damn it, I'm never gonna catch this guy. I'm never gonna read all his books. He's not as bad as his dad, Stephen King. That was my problem. I I talked to you off the air. I tried to do that with Stephen King in high school, yeah. and by then he had like 15 books, I think. But he just kept... Ooh, ca- that was still 80s fucking king, man. He was cranking them in the 80s. <laughs> Dude, I'm saying, He's, like... That was cocaine king. I'm No, I'm saying, like, you know, this is, like, was late it? 80s, yeah. early 90s, so yeah. he was done with the cocaine at that point. Oh, okay. Yeah, but he was still, like, you know, you would read one and you're trying to read one and then you realize yeah. oh he's coming out with another one and another one well, and, he, and then another one and, and you're like Fuck, there's no and way and he'll write like a 700 page book and it's like uh it's like it's yeah, cool got time. it is cool because you get like to spend more time with those books and yeah. it's nice to have that meaty read and like I haven't read one of those in a long time the last well his next yeah. book that he's he uh is said he's going to try and get published uh summer 25 is another like seven hundred page beast. I'm like this fucking guy. I'm like it's gonna take me all summer to read that book. But uh, anyway, he the book that I just finished is Strange Weather, and that is four short stories collected into this book around the motif of some sort of weather. Uh, and he actually has made his bones doing short stories because I have another one that I'm reading called Full Throttle that I want to finish too. Uh. It's what I liked about Strange Weather is the fact that it was only four, and so they were four. They were really focused, and so the first book is called Snapshot, and it ta- It's about this like creepy man that is. He's got a camera that steals people's memories, but it's also a story that's a metaphor about this little boy who is experiencing this older woman that used to be his like nanny, who like. Based on how the story is, like, she actually loved him a lot, like a parent would. And it's, like, him explaining it in the future, and he's talking about, like, the fact that, you know, it was, yes, this happened, but it was, a lot of it was this old, this poor old lady was losing her memories. Because it's a horrible thing to lose. And, uh, his ending is, like, oh, well, he made, like, the processors and things, so, like, your, your computer, like, you never forget, your computer never forgets, and all that. And the next story just takes a hard right turn called Loaded, and it's about gun violence. And let me tell you, this is what I love about this approach to this book, is like it shows you how versatile the he is, Joe Hill is as a writer, and how versatile the genre of horror can be. Because Snapshot is a little bit more like classic horror of like this creepy guy, and like it kind of takes a turn and it makes a twist of being a little bit more of a sentimental story. Whereas this one, it is in your face with the violence, and it's horrific, and it's a different level of horror, like a truly different level of scary. Um, 
because it starts with a black an innocent black kid getting shot and then it jumps into the future and it's this racist ex military guy who shoots a muslim muslim woman and her child because he thinks that it was the baby strapped to her was a bomb and thinks that she was a shooter when the shooter at the time was a woman that was uh shooting the owner of the diamond store that was he was fucking and she took it out and shot him but this racist guy thought it was this woman and then like you're reading this story and it's like it's crazy because at the end of it that guy goes on a rampage and keeps shooting people and it's like like the description of it and then it ends and it's like it fucks you it rattles you and it's like I, I, and I was reading it, I was like, this is fucked, man. Like, I didn't know if I liked it, but by the time I finished it, I'm like, this is what makes horror so good. Is it took that moment, and, and it was real. And it made me realize, like, oh, that was in, his intent. His intent was to rattle my cage and be like, yeah, this is, like, because he's like, I'm so sick of guns being romanticized, and I wanted to tell a violent, grisly, scary story showing you like because like the whole time like even if there's a sex scene where even like the description of the sex scene is talking about a gun because it's him romanticizing the gun like that's what that whole story is and then you jump to something like a loft where it's a dude who's skydiving and lands on a cloud and he's stuck on a cloud and it's like this very dream like story that's really weird and out there and then um it ends with uh, a story called rain which he said is like him parodying himself, and it's rain of nails. It's not like rusty nails. But they're like they're like it's crystallized, hardened rain, like frozen rain, and it just it's a like post apocalyptic event because it kills people because it just stabs through them. It you know cars crash. You can't drive because there's these big fucking needles sticking out, and it's like <clears throat> how that story unravels is really fun and interesting. But like the character like. One of the best names for a character ever is Honeysuckle Speck is her name. <laughs> and it's this like lesbian uh she she what was her I can't remember her her it was Leanne or something like that. I can't remember. But like it was it was a really like fun, interesting story of like how she dealt with like she she deals with this bigot who tries to at like tries to kill her and she beats the shit out of him and like some gratifying things and it was an interesting story. And by the time I finished it, I was like, it was just, it was fun to see him try different levels of horror, reach different levels of the genre. And, uh, <clears throat> at the end of the day, I enjoy it. I'm going to try and read full throttle and 20th century ghosts. And then, uh, when King sorrow comes out, his new book, I'll try and dive into that. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to get back into comics because uh, I definitely want to read that book that you were talking about. Uh, we only find them when they're dead. I also want to get back into the... I have the Grant Morrison Green Lantern books. I just have not... Yeah, what got, the fuck? I haven't gotten around to reading them. So. Uh, there's a great uh, Stephen King short story book. Um, and one story is... It's uh, it's written... It's reads as the diary. The, di- uh, the diary of a dying man. Yeah. Who's been he's a um he's a doctor who has been um <clears throat> he's been using his pilot's license in his spare time to make a shitload of money uh running heroin. Sure. And his plane dies and he's stuck on this island with no food and no water but a shitload of heroin. So he's just a little just so he starts figuring out that if he like he's like I can't find any any food or whatever. So he starts, yeah, dosing right. No, he starts dosing himself a little bit so that he can take his own toe off and eat it. Oh my god! And so on. Oh my god! It is one of the best fucking written because he he writes about it after i won't tell you the end cuz you have to read it yeah. you have to read it it's fucking insane i'll find out where it is but um and what it's called but um he writes about it afterwards and he's like i uh sometimes i uh I'm going to do my best, Stephen King. <laughs> sometimes i'm wondering if that thing is a possible thing so i go to my doctor friend and i'm like can a person eat themselves alive if they have enough heroin <laughs> no, he but he he talked to his friend. He's like, "How would that work? Like, if somebody had uh, medical training enough to like make sure that they're you know pinching off the the 
the arteries and stuff so they're you know doing they're doing proper amputations right but are they taking the heroin for pain yeah so they just knocks them out no afterwards they're, it's no it's doing it so that they can cut so they can do of, it yeah so know, the guy but can but he has how can he do that if he's fucked up on heroin like how are they gonna be able to tie it off you have to read it <laughs> you have to read it that's all i'm saying he's like he's, i feel like he's too fucked to you have to read it all right, but I'm saying it's like what a great concept of yeah. like, like you're talking about that's why you, I like the, the story about the guy getting caught on a cloud. Yeah, that's such a and I can imagine concept. like how that that's where the best stories come from is like somebody just going like I wonder if that could happen and what you take a character and you throw him in there and for all we know Joe had no idea he just thought about it and well, he throws his character in there. Here, you're stuck on a cloud, and now what does he do? And the character surprises even him. A couple of the stories he said just came up in book tours in between of of him doing other things for other books where he kind of just, like, scrolled well, it down. come from the, the one called Loaded about the gun violence, he's like, I've been... He goes, I wanted to write that story. He said, I had an idea for that story. It was writing about that story since Sandy Hook. And they, this book was published in 2016. Well, he's so he had been... Did. Yeah. But, uh... The yeah well and he says at the end of this book he says and he said it in interviews too, he goes the most appealing thing for him about short stories and why he loves why they're they're fun to write and why they're fun as for as a reader because short stories get just in your fucking face and tell you what's happening because they have to because they're like I only have like a hundred and some pages to tell you this story so I'm gonna tell this story and he says in this book like there are so many great books out there that are short and lean and tell you what they need to tell you and that's what's and i think like i i saw some things about him on reddit of like uh different people saying like they think that joe hill's best stuff is when he does short stories and i'm gonna read full throttle that has a, a lot more of his short stories he even has a couple of stories he did with uh stephen king um well, it's it's uh yeah. but but I I think though well based on strange weather I really love what he did in the in that format and it's kind of inspired me to want to do that like I want to go back into writing and I think a lot of the times when I write I get bogged down so much and get excited so much about world building and all this other stuff when you could just write a fifty page fucking thing yeah man. just bang out a hey, story yeah so that's been our double wide it's nine fifty eight and I turn into a pumpkin at ten bro. Shit. I fucking know. So I just wanted to It is my goal this spooky season to get you to watch it. at least one one well, horror movie. Well, I'm I'm I will watch one Death horror movie. Is you a know preferable what? Alter- Sorry. Stop that shit. Stop that shit. Um I'll tell you, uh I will watch a horror movie. Uh watch Silver Bullet. Starring Stephen Corey King's Hain. werewolf move- movie. Ugh. That's the one horror There's movie. There's not enough watch. werewolf movies out there. Uh, have you ever seen The Brotherhood of the Werewolf? Werewolf? No. The Brotherhood of the Wolf? The, Loop de. the best werewolf movie is an American werewolf in London, and I'll fight you on that. Yeah. I love that movie. What are you talking about? The special effects still hold up. The transformation and it's a John scene Landis is, movie. Is, is, is insane. It's a John Landis movie, which means it's hilarious. Fucking uh, Griffin Dunn. As his dead best friend. Don't be a putz, David. Such a great He's fucking a zombie. character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so far, better movie. I no, always I thought I he was, I thought he was just an undead dude. Well, it's like a zombie in his head because he's dead, dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I was trying to watch that movie. He's like uh, once every spooky season. He's like uh, I'm Jonah you, Hill. You know what? I'll uh, get you to watch hard. like Evil Dead Two or something. I'm not watching none of your shit because <laughs> I don't need to be scared. Because life is it's ten o'clock. Fuck. Oh, Pale Love Shopping with Jake and Tyler.